Our final speaker for this session will be Ambarish Mitra. He's the CEO and co-founder of Blipar. All right, hi guys. Um, at some point during my talk, I might just need volunteers uh, from the audience. There's a little few of you left. Um, uh, le let me make it quick. Uh, I've got something really cool and exclusive to show you guys. So my name is Ambarish Mitra. You can call me Rish Mitra. Uh, I'm founder and CEO of uh, Blipa. Uh, and those of you who don't know uh, us, Blipper is an image and object recognition platform uh, which allow end users to interact with uh, the physical world and physical world being products, uh, ads, uh, things you see uh, with your visual eyes. Um, we are a three-year-old company and, and thanks AWE to invite me. Um, I, I keep speaking here uh, for the last three years and I've been sort of set a personal challenge to show you guys something unique and different every year. So um, we've been going three years and our, our philosophy uh, has been uh, when we build a company that uh, we are, we're in the middle of a digital uh, revolution. Uh, everybody focuses on digital things at least for the last 10 years and since the evolution of the internet in the last 20 years. Uh, but we sometimes should remind ourselves that the physical world is uh, still enormously bigger and it's all around us. Uh, and that's where augmented reality really uh, comes into prominence uh, and more meaning. Uh, and what we are doing uh, as a business, we're trying to be that bridge between the physical and digital and we're trying to bring in relevance uh, into anything you look at. Uh, and we've been successfully in last three years, what we've done, we worked with a thousand plus brands and publishers uh, around the world and, and made products and ads uh, and point of sale um, or random objects uh, interactive. Uh, and as a technology, uh, Blipper works on every consumer touch point uh, other than radio. Uh, and, and just for like a statistic purposes, uh, today, the Blipper logo appears on over 3 billion products and 100 million pages of print uh, every month. Uh, and why do I say logo? Because we believe that um, the only way people know uh, something is blippable, if the brands or whoever's trying to promote interactivity needs to tell the users that it's uh, interactive. And we are very cautious uh, as a company of communicating those best practices uh, to the end user uh, because normally, uh, um, of course, there is uh, a lot of praise and a lot of uh, cool talk about uh, augmented reality in the AR community, but the wider world is still massively alienated from it. Uh, and we take a lot of uh, um, effort uh, into training the consumers to the point where uh, almost six million users interact with uh, random products um, today uh, on Blipper on, on a monthly basis. And so far we've got like over 150 million interactions uh, on the platform. And, and, and just from a growth perspective, uh, today we operate out of three continents and, and nine cities. So what we are trying to do here, we, we have a very, very wide and very delusional vision uh, for our business. Uh, we want to be the eyes uh, of the world. Um, everybody wants to, and in some way, but we, we're trying to build an actual browser where humans point at anything and get uh, entertainment or utility out of it, pretty much anything. And we see the, we see the physical world in a, in a different way to the point where we believe everything is a domain name. So if you want to know more about Pepsi, you point your phone at Pepsi. You don't go to Pepsi.com, and and that's what we are trying to build. Uh, it, it's it's going to take years, uh, but we're in the right we are in the right track. But today I'm here for a, for a different purpose, just to uh, talk about the whole entertainment and, and gaming side of things. But that's the wider vision of the business. We want to be the browser of the physical world where any camera in the world connected to an operating system should be able to recognize things and give people the information. 
uh, and we have a CMS in place which people utilize to add content onto that browser. Uh, and, and, and that leads us to the whole, whole point of uh, wearables in general. So it's not restricted uh, to phones. Um, it, it could be glasses, watches, uh, anything. So you know, mobility truly is not about mobile, as you guys must have heard it many times. Uh, it's transferring that behavior uh, into whatever the device of choice is. And, and today, it seems uh, this is becoming quite a relevant uh, device. And so we transported the Blipper browser actually from the phone uh, onto the glass. And we were one of the first people in the world to do it, to do actually cloud-based recognition and tracking and give rich experiences uh, on a glass, which I'll be demoing in a moment uh, with help of some volunteers. And, and the reason we, we, we're focusing on gaming besides doing education, branding, or all forms of rich media content, based on, on an average of around 150, 150 million interactions we've had on our platform, we've, we've noticed that uh, games are, are, are a very dominant behavior uh, and an, an average, and this is keeping in mind that absolute rubbish co campaigns to amazingly successful campaigns, 75 seconds is our average, but anywhere where the word game appears, you'll notice it's above average. So game and photo is 112 seconds, game only is 81 seconds. So it's being proven that any form of gamification or any form of incentives which is as aligned with uh, game form of entertainment really works and it's just not, I'm not like uh, giving you guys a breakthrough news here. We, we're seeing that in trends in the app store, uh, what kind of content really works. So um, on, that, on that very note, um, uh, I, I would move into a demo mode and, and, and cut, down, cut down the theory. Uh, but what, what we, we believe in, irrespective of what we've seen, and I know the devices today are quite um, uh, high latency devices, but uh, there are limitless possibilities with wearables, and, uh, and the whole gaming industry will see a whole new wave of content creation. Um, and, and today we are announcing that Blipper, uh, as a company, will be launching an SDK in six weeks' time for game developers to create uh, interactive games through image recognition and AR on the Blipper platform for glass only. This is not for mobiles, for glass, because we believe at least from now to next six months, the great opportunities in the glass area um, for, for interactive games to happen. So what I'm going to do is give you guys a couple of quick demos. One would be um, on the phone. Uh, just to show you what we are talking about, wh what's the proposition on the phone today. And then we'll do a similar demo on the glass. So um, that's the B. Uh, blipper opens up uh, in, a, in a blipper scanner mode. Uh, and um, this is a Pepsi can. There are a billion of these out for the World Cup. And you'd notice each one of those cans actually asking you to blip. That's our logo, download blipper, aim and frame at the player's face. So when you point it at uh, the player's face, uh, immediately it recognizes it. And the sound associated with it, which you won't be able to hear. So you can notice uh, it's a curved surface, how seamless the tracking is. I'm moving it far from my hand. E even the content floats on it beautifully. These are world famous football players like Lionel Messi uh, and more. Sorry, these things happen. Um, you know what, just phone just died. <laughs> uh, it, it's a bit of an outdated phone, but this is the only one which had the adapter working on it. But at least you got to see something. Uh, next thing I'm going to give you a demo of. That's fine, that's fine. I mean, you got the picture, right? You got, I would have shown you the game where this became a football nade and you could have a multiplayer penalty shootout game. But check the cans out, they're out there. The next thing I would show you, and this is a bit of a hack we're doing because there's no other way right now to show, um, 
show what, uh, like what I'm going to show you on glass. So my new best friend, Amanda, here uh, is going to help me hold the screencast of the phone onto that screen so you get some perspective. And I'll need another volunteer, maybe two, please, thank you, who could hold this poster for me. And I'm going to take one minute to show this. So, no, oh, thank you. So if you just hold this poster, double-handed should be fine. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me wear my digital glasses. Yeah. So if you move forward a bit, because uh, so everything we're seeing here would be slightly delayed due to Bluetooth latency, but in reality, this is. Uh, this is uh, quite fast, actually. So it, it, it opens up on the blipper scan mode. That's our logo on it when we open up. It, it launches, and you're seeing the mirror application, obviously, because it's coming from the, from the screen. Like exactly the blipper proposition, you are, it, it opens up on a scanner mode. I don't have to do anything. If I just look at anything, blipper recognizes the same proposition as on the phone. So it's this piece of art. Over here, uh, these rocks are actually flying out in three-dimensional space uh, right now. And, and, and the game is that I, I have to shoot these asteroids out, otherwise at some point it's going to hit my face. Um, and, and I don't know how much of that you're seeing over there, but just to give you a perspective, this is actually happening in 3D. So these rocks are actually flying in the room now. And this is my view on the glass. And I can, start, I can start shooting them. And, and, and let me know if you're seeing them on the screen. Just say, are you seeing that on the screen? I mean, I'm not able to see what's going on over there. But over here, it's very seamless. And you are seeing it in a very high latency mode. But you, you get the idea that how, how users would be able to create great interactive pieces of content uh, just by looking at it. I mean, we are partnering with leading museums in the world. Um, and um, uh, so that they can make art interactive. I'll show you, and so I'm still on the browser mode. Thank you, thank you guys. I'm still on the browser mode, I haven't shut it down. I'll just point like a typical ad uh, in front of it as if I'm reading a magazine. Immediately that ad uh, comes to life. I, I wanna know more about it. Uh, it it's asking me, try on the True Blend uh, colors from, uh, these are like different shades of foundation or something for women. You can match it again on your hand uh, and choose, choose the, like, the right one and get a coupon for it or stuff like that. It, it's trying to connect to the website, which I'm not connected to. So um, you get the idea. I mean, you, you get the idea that what we've created, we've taken the entire blipper proposition, uh, put it on glass, um, and made it equally visually rich experience. If you try it for yourself, you'll see it's, it's seamless, it's fast, it happens in real time. Um, so whoever's thinking in the room that rich media is not possible on glass, come and see me. And we'll be launching the SDK for anybody to develop in six weeks' time. Uh, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, Ambrish. We have time for a couple of quick, quick questions. Amanda. As far as last goes, the battery life is pretty bad, especially doing something that heavy. What mm. do you propose for that? I mean, uh, so we are, um, uh, I'm not like trying to brag here, but we are one of the most optimized uh, battery efficient software. And that is the reason if you can, the developers would know that how difficult it is to port uh, real AR interactive experiences on such a low powered device like glass. And, and, and glass itself isn't very battery efficient, but you could do almost 30 minutes of such gaming experiences on it today now directly. And if you compare that to even recording a video, probably you can do 45 minutes of rec video recording. So it's inefficient against normal glass usage, but by 20% more. Uh, but that's something, it, it's almost, I mean, we are at the best level of optimization. But again, it's a challenge for as well Google to make it uh, more efficient and we'll proportionately uh, increase. Uh, but the, the piece of software on it is pretty light uh, from our end. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Oh, you yeah, have one more. I wonder how expensive is the SDK, and also if we develop any content, do we have to pay royalty? Uh, no, uh, actually not. Um, this is, uh, for the first time, Blipper is becoming very generous. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we giving, uh, we, first of all, there's no charge uh, for the SDK. Uh, our business model remain, we don't white label our technology, we, or we've held a browser proposition from day one. Um, we want content providers and content creators to launch, publish content inside Blipper, uh, and we're not going to penalize you for that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ambrish. Thank you. And Cheers. thank you to the rest of the speakers. That concludes this session.